thank you for joining me for this RES exam preparation. Now, in this whole series of short lectures, I hope that I can help you to clarify some doubts. Now, so if let's say you think that uh, it's not enough, we have other resources, paid resources to help you, uh, starting, of course, uh, with the uh, 10 paper one uh, video recording and of course the more than 1,000 uh, multiple choice questions. Now, but before you even go there, uh, the first short video, which is this one, I just want to introduce myself to you. I'm the first RES trainer. So this is history. Nobody can change the fact. And I started the first course in November 2010, way, way ahead of other trainers because most of them started after uh, Christmas. That's why uh, the first few exams, they are purely 100% all my students. So I have actually, as a result, collected uh, the most, uh, the most number of past year questions. Now, of course, uh, all those uh, MCQ that you're going to see uh, in your revision package, uh, they are not all uh, past year uh, exam questions. I actually model after the sophistication of the exam questions. Uh, you know, one look, I know where those questions come from. Many of them actually came from established case laws. Uh, some are local case laws, some are uh, England case law. So I know where to get them. And uh, I actually, uh, again, remodel uh, many of the case laws uh, and, and actually uh, imitate the sophistica sophistication level of the exam question. Now, so in this, in this um, short video itself, I will just showcase three of them. Now, so this is a more than 1,000 uh, question that I'm talking about uh, to help you. You can actually practice uh, on them. Now, like I always say in class, uh, uh, practicing MCQ is not enough because when the examiner actually change the question a little bit, uh, uh, when your conceptual understanding is not there, you will be defeated. So you see the same concept they can keep changing the scenario to ask you. So that's why my aim is to help you with the complete conceptual understanding. That's the reason why I came up with the video so that the, the video recording, you can uh, listen to it again and again, again and again. All right, and the MCQ is of course, when you practice already, then you know uh, uh, where you have gone wrong. So then you can go back to the video to watch the video again and again. Now let's let, let let me take you through one scenario questions that uh, that uh, the sophistication level. Now, so I like I say I I model after the sophistication level, and not copy word for word. Eh? So now, so now this is a case whereby a son has the permission of the father to build a house on the adjacent land which belongs to the father. So the father say this is not a gift. So, okay, so the son uh, built, uh, built the house already and then the father uh, retained uh, retain the land title. Now, 20 years later, the father passed away, leaving behind all his real estate to his second wife, meaning this son's uh, stepmother. So now I have three questions to ask you. So of course, in this, in this video, I won't show you the answer, uh, but the answer is actually in one of the... 12 videos that you're going to watch, uh, the free videos uh, that you're going to watch. Uh. So now the first question I want to ask from this scenario will be, what right did the son possess when he built on his father's land? Is it a license? Is it a life estate? Is it a leasehold estate? Or is it a promissory estoppel? Now, second question I want to ask will be, now, if the son was able to prove that his father promised him to let him live in the house for as long as he's one. All right. So what right would he possess over the father's land? Is it a contractual license? Is it a life estate? Is it a tenancy at will? Or is it a fixed period tenancy? Third question. On what basis was the son allowed to remain on land after the father's death? Uh, in other words, the court say that, no, 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 he can remain. All right, so now is it on basis of established tradition, on basis of equity, or on basis of adverse possession after 20 years? 
or is it on the basis of the father's promise? Now, so, uh, like I say, find the answer in the other uh, videos. Now, so after you have gone through all the videos, all the 12 uh, videos, now I will, of course, encourage you uh, to purchase uh, the recording, 10 paper one lessons, that I recorded uh, before the pandemic. So it's still very current now. So you can listen to the concepts again and again, again and again. So especially for those people uh, who don't like to read, you know, it's so thick, the course notes, you can just listen to, to my uh, video recording and then, um, you know, let the video speak to you. All right, so now, or uh, you can buy a bundle uh, right now, I give more than 60% uh, discount if you buy both. You buy the MCQ, if you buy the, uh, the video add together, it's less than $200. Now, now, a little bit more about my track record. Now, I have trained more real estate salesperson than any other trainer since year 2002. Uh, before that, I already started uh, teaching in uh, 1999. But because I was also, you know, at the same time selling houses, at the same time teaching, so the classes are not many. So, so uh, by uh, 2002, uh, I have more or less uh, become like a full-time trainer, uh, even though I still do a, a little bit of transaction here and there. So now I have trained uh, more than 20,000 uh, salesperson. More than that, even crossing 30,000. But of course, not everybody stay, stay on to become real estate salesperson. Uh, many of them, after taking the exam, they just disappear. So like example, uh, uh, the, the earlier uh, examination course is called Siha. Siha. All right, that, 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 that is many, many years ago. Uh, 1999, I already started teaching it. So, and uh, after that, before CEA step in, uh, I actually created this uh, exam course called Certified Estate Agents course in collaboration with the Institute of Estate Agents. Uh, so these two books are these two books are written by me, uh, and uh, wrote the whole wrote the whole whole syllabus. So very thick book, eh? very thick book. So um, ten thousand agents actually certified under this course. So when it comes to examination, uh, you can trust my track record. Now, so in the early days of REX exam, and uh, now I actually wrote this uh, glossary of term uh, under, of course, the name of IEA. And uh, you can see this, CEA actually put the message there to support this initiative. So now, so if, uh, this is free, free download, like, okay? So you can actually later on proceed to download, okay? So if you, if you say that, okay, I also want to know how, uh, uh, what are the terms known as in Chinese? So I've done the translation. Now, so um, CEA actually um, uh, recognize this, uh, recognize this as my track record. Now, so uh, if all this is still not enough, uh, you can actually come to my uh, quiz show. Uh, that happens every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. But usually we will stretch to about 2.15 thereabout because I still need to explain the wrong options. Now, and of course, I have the uh, full recording of all the, all the quiz show, the first three months of quiz shows, the recording. Uh, also, uh, if you want to view them, um, I will allow you to view them uh, free of charge. It's also on this same website. Now, so I hope that you enjoy the entire mini series of RES exam uh, preparation. So I will see you in other recording.